Good morning. This year we've all made commitments to our health, like quitting bad habits, eating right, exercising more. But with all of the new information and conflicting views on what healthy actually means, how do we know what we should be putting into our bodies? Well, health correspondent Jim Morelli is here to explain. Welcome back, Jim. Glad to be here. Let's start with that. What does healthy really mean and how can we continue on that track? Well, healthy means being mindful every day of what you're eating, are you exercising, are you getting enough sleep, all the basics. And the problem going into the new year is, believe it or not, by the end of the year, 92% of all people who made resolutions to get healthier will fail. Okay. So we got a really tiny number there who are going to succeed. And the reason why is they bite off more than they can chew. You know, I'm going to lose 25 pounds by spring break so I can fit into a bikini. Mm. It ain't going to happen. Yeah. So I would suggest don't make January 1st the magic day. Start today, start next week, and make it small. Add a fruit or vegetable to each meal and eliminate something that's higher in calories and maybe has less nutrition. Add an extra half hour of sleep if you possibly can. That will help to control weight. And also be mindful of labels if you're going to take supplements. And we can get to that in a minute. Okay, the sleep helps you lose weight. How is that? Because sleep reduces our stress levels for one thing and there's evidence that cortisol levels increase. That's a stress hormone when we don't get enough sleep. But cortisol tends to cause us to hang on to weight. Mm. Fat, too fat. So that's why we want to make sure we're getting enough sleep. All right, thank you. Sure. Let's get to the vitamins. Okay, so um, if you're going to take supplements, there are a lot of questions about which ones to take, how do you select them, and I've got a good place where we can start. And I want to talk about something called the United States Pharmacopeia, or USP. They've been around for about 200 years. This is an independent, nonprofit, scientific organization, and they've got a very big public health task that they uh, go at, and that is to ensure the quality and potency of things like dietary supplements. They also do things with food and also with medicines. And this helps to secure the integrity and the quality of the American drug supply. And with supplements, they've got a program called USP Verified that they established. Basically, for a product to meet the USP Verified mark, that is an award that's given and placed right on the label, you have to meet stringent tests for quality, purity, and potency. And what this basically says to the consumer is, uh, look, you have peace of mind here. That's What's, so, so good. It's so important. What's on the label is in the bottle. And we're talking about things like the ingredients, the potency, and then they even go into things like bioavailability, which is, you know, how available is this drug to your body within a specified amount of time? You know, the absorption of it, and does it do it good, its good work in a certain amount of time? They check for specified contaminants and to make sure that these are manufactured by the FDA's latest GMPs or good manufacturing practices. That is so good because there's so many supplements out there and I guess they're Absolutely. all not created the same. People think they're doing the right thing, but you could be doing more harm than good, especially if it's not something that's qualified. All right, tell us about the supplements that you brought here. Okay, so we've got vitamin D3, which a lot of people this time of year might be taking because the sunshine is down and but we get vitamin D from the sun. I, first of all, before I go into that, I would suggest strongly that anyone who's going to take supplements have a little conversation with your pharmacist and find out, you know, can any of these interact with drugs that I'm taking? Because mm. some certainly can, and you probably won't find that information on the vitamin label, so you might want to get somebody involved if you're taking prescriptions Good especially. Um, we also have fish oil. We've got some iron. We also have some Move Free, which is a product if you have sore joints, a chondroitin-type product. So, I mean, there's a vast array of things out there that people use and help them. They just need some good advice and they want to make sure, again, that what's on that label is in that bottle. That's really crucial. Yeah, that's really good stuff. I like how when you started off, you were saying people can pretty much get off of that hamster wheel of starting these resolutions and then, you know, pretty soon after they've fallen off the wagon. Yeah. So you're saying supplement with fruits and vegetables, take some supplements. Little steps. Little steps. Yeah. Exercise. I'm sure that's another thing Absolutely. that you want to... Absolutely. But, you know, I mean, if you sign up for a gym on January 1st, you're, you have a huge crowd of people there. Believe me, by <laughs> February 1st, they're gone they're already. Gone, right? <laughs> so, so you might want to wait a little bit, and in the meantime, in the month of January, perhaps you just start a little walking program on your own, and then maybe gradually you edge into the gym. We try to do too much. We want instant results. That's kind of how we're geared, yeah. and we, we're not going to get them, especially the older we get, we're not going to yeah, get them. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. And you know, it, I, I've always wondered, what is the magic formula of what supplements to take? You said maybe you should check in with your pharmacist about interacting with other drugs, but what are some of the other things that you should do to figure out what do I need? How do I know I need this? Well, I would say that in the absence of all other advice that a solid, good B-complex 
is probably appropriate mm -hmm. for most everybody and probably beneficial for most everybody. And why is that? Because we all need the B vitamins and they are harmless and um, they're, they're going to help, they're not going to harm you. Mm -hmm. And the interactions with other drugs are minimal, if any. So most people can probably benefit from a basic B vitamin, basic multivitamin. It's when you get into things like D3 and iron that you kind of have to be a little careful because these are the kind, for example, iron, it can it's cause toxic. bleeding in the stomach, you know, so you want to be careful if you've got some kind of a condition that makes you susceptible to that. So that's why I, I like for people to check first. Good. It's a good idea to have them available and it's good to have the power of being a consumer and pick them, but it's a good idea to get information. And too. look for that USP. Absolutely. Very good. Thank you, Jim, so much. My pleasure. And we'll have more Let's Talk Live right after this.